We Power Authority, we are the first company to actually hybridize mm. solar and hydro together. Hello and welcome to Best Tech on Ghana Web TV. My name is Ernestina Sewa Asante. Today we are at a hydroelectric dam situated on the Black Volta. Yes, your guess is right. It is the Bui Dam. And today my guest is the Chief Executive Officer of Bui Power Authority, Samuel Kofi Ahinyave Jambasi. Yeah. And he's going to tell us what they do here and how much megawatts of power they add to the national grid. You're yeah, welcome right. on the Thank show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank First you of all, give us a brief history about Bui Power Authority. Very well. So this uh, is nice, first of all, meeting with you. And uh, as you really said, we generate power. We Power Authority was started about 13 years ago uh, by President Kufo. Okay. And uh, it took about six, seven years to complete, meaning that we've been generating power for the past five years. So we have the 404 uh, megawatts hydro. Mm. Hydro simply means that we are generating the power from the water. And as you can see, when you go out there, you see three pen stock, mm. which gives you three big turbines. Each of them uh, is about 133.3 megawatts. And then we also have a smaller unit, uh, which is about four megawatts here. So in all, we have 404 megawatts hydro. Mm. Then apart from that, uh, in the year 2020, we commissioned the Chinese to also build for us a 50 megawatt solar plant. And that also has been working for the past one and a half to two years. Mm. And, uh, and then recently, we also completed a five megawatt floating solar. So in all, if you add the 404 plus 50 plus 5, mm -hmm. you are getting about 459 megawatts. That's Is enough. Yeah, that's Or more enough. than enough. No, it's, it's, uh, compared to VRE, we are still very small. Okay. Yeah, because Akosombo alone is about 900 something, almost 1,000 megawatts. Mm -hmm. So we are still small. Okay. But we are very, very efficient in the way we do our things. We Power Authority, we are here with a lot of professionals, mm. people who work and work very well. Mm. And we expect that efficiency and harmony and a high level of professionalism is our hallmark here. Okay. And, uh, and so as you came here, you can see the way you are handled, the way you are managed, mm. everything is on time. Yeah. And we behave a little uh, better mm -hmm. in the way we, are, we approach work than the normal Ghanaian. Okay. So we have a lot of engineers and corporate services and finance. All these people come to form the Bui Power Authority that we talk about. Okay. So here is the BGS, that is the Bui Generating Station. Mm -hmm. And then we have our head office in Accra that uh, uh, I'm normally there, but most of the time, this is also my office. And this office, as you can see, is situated in a way that in the event that there's a collapse on the dam, I'll be the first to go. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Uh, because of the way it's situated, yeah. yes. Hmm. So uh, that's, that's it for now. Okay, mm. so what role will Bui Dam play in the country's renewable energy sector? Very well. First of all, let me say that in the beginning, Bui Dam was made as a picking plant. Mm. When I say picking plant, it means we expect that any time the load or the load requirement by the country goes up, then we are asked to generate more power. But right now, as it is, uh, it's no more a picking plant. It's a plant that at any time we generate the power as required by ECG and Gridco okay. into the national grid. Whatever we do here is always into the national grid. Uh -huh. So to your question, if we are talking about renewables, 
I can tell you that initially uh, we did not have a department for renewable energy, even though we were supposed to lead in the renewable energy. But uh, today we have a very powerful renewable energy department, mm -hmm. uh, which is headed by Director Wisdom Togobo. Mm -hmm. And they have done very well. And uh, the 50 megawatts of the solar plant and the 5 megawatts of the solar plant are managed by them. Mm -hmm. They operate it together with the contractor who installed the plant. Now, ours is to make sure that we become the leaders in renewable, meaning that we should, as much as possible, do more than renew more renewable projects than any other organization in this country. So, as I speak to you, we have the 55 megawatts here. We've started 50 megawatts solar in Yendi. It started. You need to go there and see sure. for yourself. And then we've acquired lands in Tamale, Buipe, Sola, Bolgatanga. I mean, lands that are in strategic positions where you have grid coal substations okay. so that we can build more solar plants as we go along. Mm. And we hope that by the year 2030, we'll be able to do much more than what we have now. Okay. Mm. So considering the amount of sun that we have, mm. why are we not utilizing it by depending solely on that mm. as a source of energy? Oh, that's a good mm. question. First of all, you can't build solar plant everywhere. Mm. You need to check out the irradiation. But luckily for Ghana, the northern sector and part of the Vuta regime, we have proper radiation that can give us more solar uh, power. Then secondly, we have the limitation of cash. If you don't have the money, you can't build. <laughs> so most of the contracts that we give to people are actually what you call EPC plus F. That's uh, engineering, procurement, construction, and finance. So the person comes in, brings all his equipment, his tools, everything, builds the plant, hand over to us. We run it, generate the power, sell it, and pay him. Uh -huh. So that's the EPC plus F. So that's the second word. So money has a lot to play. Then the other thing that has also a role to play in why we can't get all the sun in the world to give us power is that sun is there between 6 to 6, you know. Mm -hmm. From 6 o'clock you have the sun, um, yeah. and then when it's 6 o'clock, no more sun. Mm -hmm. So the question is, you, the consumer, will you be ready that from six, or six to six, you will have power, and then from six in the evening to so six in the morning, you wait <laughs> until the sun comes again? The answer is no. Mm. So we are limited by what you call the base load. Okay. Base load is that for every solar plant that you build, you must have a partner. So here we have the 404 hydro, which runs 24 hours. So we expect that after running the solar plant for maybe some time during the day, we can shut down some of the plant, let the water be there, and then in the night we use it to generate so that you can get the 24 hours running. Okay. Do you understand? Yes. <laughs> so we are limited also by the base load. As I speak to you, all the projects that we have now, if we put everything together, then it means the base load of 400 megawatts hydro that we have will not be sufficient. So if you want to build more solar, then you have to first look for a base load before you continue. Mm -hmm. Luckily, government has given us the three rivers in the western region, River Ancubra, River Pra, uh, and uh, River is it Tano. Tano, uh, River Tano, so that we can build more hydro plants on them. Mm. God is very good to us that we can have more rivers to get more hydro plants in order that we'll be able to build more solar plants. Mm. Uh, now, not only hydro, sometimes you can also do wind energy. 
that is where the wind speeds are good and you can harness the wind power throughout throughout uh, the day and night mm -hmm. if it happens like that then you can also do solar wind okay mm -hmm. but as you speak we are now more interested in doing the solar hydro okay. and i want to tell you that we power authority we are the first company to actually hybridize mm. solar and hydro together okay a lot of countries have not done that we are about the first if not in west africa in the whole of africa mm. we are the first to be able to do that okay. and that's anybody who wants to learn about that thing should come to us okay. i cannot say that now for you to go and talk in the air me too, I want some money. When people can tell them how we do hybridization <laughs> and get some money. <laughs> That's fine. You are talking yeah. of you. So it's a company secret. Okay. Uh -huh. Sure. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> yes. So talking of going to use the River Pra and Cobra mm. and the third one. Mm. Tano. Tano River, mm. yes, to generate power. Mm. Are the activities of Galamseas not going to affect it? Interestingly, if you put a hydro plant there, mm. activities of Galamsey will reduce entirely. Wow. I, will, I will explain it to you why. Okay. You see, if you go to Western region, mm. the land is so rich, really, with a lot of minerals. And so the type of dams that we want to put there are not the reservoir dams that you see here. Okay. Uh, the, the dam we have here is a reservoir dam. That means you block the river, and then you create a reservoir at the back, and then use that water to generate power. Okay. So we and Akusumbo are reservoir dams. But if you go to a place like Mo, you see that there is no reservoir at the back of the mm -hmm. Kwon Dam, meaning that the dam is situated right within the, the river, so that the flow of the river eh, gives it that kinetic energy to run the turbines. Okay. So that's why we call it run off the river dams. Okay? Hey, you are learning engineering. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so those are the projects that we want to do in the western region mm -hmm. so that we don't occupy land so, so much. We don't, uh, like, for example, here we have the issue of the communities that were... Uh, uh, brought out from the places where the water has, you know, taken over, you know, we have to resettlement and a, whole, a lot of resettlement mm -hmm. and all those things. When we do run off the river dams, those things are actually non-existent. Okay. And so the dam cost becomes cheaper. Mm -hmm. So we feel that uh, in the western region, <coughs> Once we put up a dam there, then it becomes a property of the state. It becomes a national security area, just as you have here. Okay. As I speak to you, there are soldiers all over the place. You go to Dokochina, you go to here, so there is more attention on the dam. And therefore, we don't allow anybody at all to come in the vicinity of the dam. Okay. Like if you go, on the reservoir, you have almost about 100 miles, you know, around. Nobody comes there. Mm -hmm. If you are there, you quickly be arrested. We have Navy people all over the place. So it becomes a very intensive security area. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, no Galamse man will venture in those areas. Mm -hmm. But today, the Tano is just running free. Akubra is running free. And the Pra is running free. People do what they want. But once there's a dam over there, it becomes a serious, you know, security zone. And Galamse will be reduced. Okay. Yeah. The conversation is getting interesting, but then yeah. we are taking a quick breather. When mm. we come back, Mr. Jamesi is going to tell us how, whether or not, government can achieve, or let me say Ghana can mm. achieve the net zero emissions by 2070 as we are transitioning to renewable energy. Mm. Visit www.ghanawebexcellenceawards.com and click Nominations Bar or click the Nominations Banner on www.ghanaweb.com. 
Provide your personal details by entering your first and last names. Fill in your contact details, that is, phone number and email address. Select the appropriate category out of 17 options for your nominee. Provide the personal details of your nominee. Provide at least one or more social handles of your nominee. Tell us why she qualifies for the selected category and then proceed. You receive a pop-up with, would you like to make another nomination? If yes, click yes and go through the same process of nominating another woman. If no, click no and you are done nominating your nominee. Everyone needs the perfect snack to munch on during a fun moment. Wow. Enjoy the tasty McBerry Twist Cupcakes, wow. deliciously baked and packaged for a sweet treat. Mm. Premium quality cakes baked with love for all, enriched in butter and milk. Mm, yummy. Oh, McBerry Twist Cupcakes, simply irresistible. Try one today. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back from the break. So please tell us, with the state of the economy, mm -hmm. is it likely for Ghana to achieve the net zero emissions by 2070? Well, if you ask my personal opinion, mm -hmm. and the experience that I've so far had in, uh, in the energy generation or power generation, I would say yes, why not? It depends on the policy of the government, and it depends on who are in control, who are managing the affairs. Mm. For example, recently we went to Russia and uh, the Russians were even prepared to bring us uh, uh, a nuclear plant, eh? mm. a nuclear plant on the ship. Wow. So that all that they do is to come and dock it here and then you just block it. And then you're having power for 60 years, you see. Okay. So all these things are things that the government will have to look at and then to make sure that we plan ourselves very well. So for me, because nuclear too is, is, a, is a, a net zero uh, equipment. Mm. It's a renewable power. Mm. <laughs> and apart from that, if the economy is good and there's peace, people will come in and invest in our solar People will come in and invest in our wind energy, geothermal, whatever. I mean, it all depends on mm. the situation. Okay. Yes. So how but is I, Buidam? But I, I, I am positive about that. Okay. Mm. How is Buidam working with relevant stakeholders, such as government and local communities, mm. to ensure a successful transition to solar and to maximize the benefits for Ghana? We work under the Ministry of Energy. Mm. We have a minister. And the ministry's duty is to actually bring about all the policies that will enable us to perform. Mm. Uh, so ours is to manage it, take the policies, put them into reality, and ensure that we improve upon our power generation. So we aim at maximizing power generation. We aim at increasing the power output that we give to this country. And will continue to be there. Okay. Yes. We need insights into the investment and development plans of Buidam mm. in relation to solar energy projects mm. and how they align with governments or Ghana's renewable energy targets. Yeah, there is this uh, energy transition by mm. 2030. Okay. And we think that uh, we have uh, directors of this company who are also members of that committee. And we think that with what we are doing, if we are given the necessary assistance, and also we are able to be given the necessary payments, because the greatest problem of this company is that we generate and yet we are not paid for what we generate. Mm. Yeah, it's, a, it's an issue and I need to talk about it. Yeah. It's like you generate 100 units and you are paid 20 units. Mm. So what happens to the 80 units? Yeah. So if the efficiency of receivables is there. I think that we can do so much. So many times our uh, job, though, is supposed to generate more power. Our job is also supposed to go and chase money. Mm. 
Yeah. And if the money doesn't come, that's a very serious issue. Mm -hmm. So we pray that the more money we get, the more projects we undertake, and Ghana will be better for all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, From my research, I realized that on April 1st, mm -hmm. Um, the ECG owes your outfit $612 million. Exactly. What's the latest on that? It has gone up. <laughs> what figure did you mention? First April. Uh -huh. $612 million. Now it's $658 million. Wow. Yes. Because we are always generating. Okay. And the more we generate, they are supposed to pay us. But if, as I said, if you generate 100 units, uh, you are paid 20 units. Mm. So the man who is supposed to pay you 100 units is paying you only 20 units. Of course, every month, you will still be having more debts to pay. Yeah. So as I speak, it's now around $658 million. Mm. Yeah. So how are you going to get your money to keep you running as a company? Yeah. Uh, recently, there was a meeting uh, there is this what we call cash waterfall committee. Okay. And recently there was a meeting, and at that meeting, it was resolved that ECG must be able to pay us some amount of money at least every week or every two weeks. And then the Ministry of Finance is supposed to top up so that at least every month we'll be able to pay salaries and have enough to pay for our investments. And this new arrangement started uh, just 21st of August. So we are praying that it will continue like that. Mm. And I'm beginning to see some positive signs. Okay. And uh, I know our minister is working very hard mm. to ensure that we get more funds. And then what motivates you to keep working when the people you are working for are not doing what, they are not giving you the due thing they are supposed to? Well, the money is not a lost money. Okay. <laughs> if ECG owes uh, BPA $658 million, mm -hmm. we are a government company. They're also government company. So at least the government knows that some money is in the system that is owed to BPA. Okay. So it's a government company. Mm. If it were a private company... Like the IPPs? Uh, no. If it were like we were selling to a private okay. company... And that private company was not paying. Then we can say that uh, at a point in time we'll be running into bad debts. But this one is government to government, okay. so it's government money still sitting down there. Okay. So ours is to continue to deliver and to make sure that there's no doom so in this country. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. So how are you preparing for energy transition and climate change? Very well. So, like we said ours is to increase our capacity generation mm -hmm. and also to make sure that we do a lot of forestry and environment and i'm proud to say that for the first time we power authority were able to develop more than thousand hectares of forests wow. yeah that even the united the undp boss came here to see as you go around most of the greens that you see we did them ourselves uh -huh. Because we've learned the lesson from VRA that VRA in the past was not interested in the environment, mm. especially trying to develop forest along the river bank. Mm. And so they had a lot of, you know, a lot of issues, people trying to settle there and also a whole lot of uh, climatic okay. problems. Mm. But for us, no. So we learned from the mistakes of VRA and now we are developing plantation to make sure that our waters are well protected. Mm. Yes. Okay. So lastly, um, what are the two major solar energy sources we have and how much have they contributed to the national grid? Okay. okay so those ones are there. But as I said, each of them depends on the location mm. where you want to put those plants. But for us, we are dealing with the concentrated one. And that, we think, is better for us. Mm. But I want to say a little bit about the floating solar. Okay. <laughs> you see, one disadvantage of solar plants is land usage. You need a large space of land to be able to put up the panels to generate power. Mm. And uh, 
this is also not good environmentally, really. So, but if you look at this reservoir, if we put solar panels on the reservoir that we have now, we'll be talking about five to 10 gigawatts of power, huge, yeah. without even cutting a single tree. Uh -huh. So, uh, we power, we are the first to do five megawatts solar in the whole of West Africa. We are the first. Wow. Eh? We are the nice. first, <laughs> yeah, yeah, to do five megawatts. And we saw that our engineers were up to the task. They did very well and they quickly learned. So I, as the CEO, have decided that we are going to increase it very quickly mm -hmm. to add 10 more megawatts. Great. And if the 10 more megawatts is also done at the time that we want, it means we better start looking more to uh, uh, floating solars than the land base. Yeah. Uh, so it is something that we think we can also go, even though there are some limitations, but we can do much more so that we can get more solar for Ghana. Yeah. Yes. I must say it was a very nice experience, mm. my team and I, when we went on the floating, yeah, yeah. Uh, the floaters. You were, not, the, you were not afraid. Oh, at the start I they was. They said the women were not afraid, but the better. men were afraid. Mm -hmm. But then they say, well, what do you men know can do, do, you know what men can do better. No, I don't know how to see. I'll learn how to see. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you too. It's a pleasure All meeting right. the CEO of uh, WIPA Authority, Mr. Samuel Kofi Ahiave Jambesi. Yeah. Once again, thank you very much. My thank name you. is Ernestina Sewa Asante.